Hi, I'm a self-taught artist who spent most of the last decade unhappily getting a medical degree. Life is short, so now making a commitment to reinvigorate my creative brain with art projects with a purpose. In this video, I'm going to take a stab at editorial illustration and document the process of designing an image that illuminates complex and nuanced ideas while looking visually appealing. I recently listened to the podcast Movement Memos with Kelly Hayes. In the episode, Work Isn't Fulfilling Because Capitalism is a Death March, Kelly Hayes interviews writer Sarah Jaffe, who is the author of Work Won't Love You Back, How Devotion to Our Jobs Keeps Us Exploited, Exhausted, and Alone. My goal is to create an illustration for this episode. Step 1. Ideation Ideation is the process of conceptually designing an image based on the message you are trying to communicate. It's about understanding the prompt and generating storytelling ideas and not so much about actual visual design. It's the why and not the how of an illustration. I started with looking at some key ideas from the episode. Here are six themes that stuck out to me. One. In our capitalist system, workers are expected to have a deep loyalty and dedication to their jobs despite their employers having the power to manipulate police and exploit them at will, aka work won't love you back. Even if you love what you do, work is still work and in service of others. Even hobbies you turn into side hustles can seem like a chore when it's boiled down to a commodified service or product rather than a creative outlet, especially if you need extra cash to put food on the table because you are underpaid. Two. Capitalism has always been about monitoring and measuring worker efficiency. Technology has allowed for better modes of surveillance. This is how we end up with Amazon workers having to urinate in water bottles or skipping bathroom breaks because the technology used to monitor them punishes them for not meeting work quotas. 3. Neoliberalism isn't just about privatization of public institutions and free markets. It's about engineering a well-defended free market that benefits a wealthy few at the exploitation of the many. Violence, criminalization, and vilification of those who dare refuse to work under abuse are the norm. In 2013, Teachers of underfunded Chicago public schools push back against the intentionally designed austerity that starves their work and the education of their black and brown students. Teachers who protested were arrested and cast as failing, lazy, and not dedicated enough. 4. Neoliberalism is an entire social engineering project to destroy solidarity, to individualize and atomize society. Like this Margaret Thatcher quote, There is no such thing as society, there are individual men, and women, and there are families. Social justice protest movements are a response to neoliberalism's encroachment of public space and its manipulation of how we relate to one another. Protest creates new possibilities. After extracting these major themes, I distilled them further to make a list of words and phrases that came to mind. Like so. I then selected four words to base my thumbnail on. Isolation, surveillance, solidarity, and imbalance. Step two, composition. I gravitated towards the visual imagery of isolation, exhaustion, and cubicles. This was admittedly inspired by my recently watching the TV series What We Do in the Shadows, in which unassuming energy vampire Colin Robinson is feeding off the energy of his corporate colleagues. I played with different layouts of the cubicle maze, experimenting with various angles and different exaggerations. I really liked the idea of cubicle mazes, but wanted to portray an intentionally designed three-dimensional system, like architecture, like a building. I started drawing out different box structures before I realized, hey! I could Blender 3D this, so I did. I'm not the greatest modeler by any means, not because it is hard necessarily, but because it's probably my lowest stat on my art skill tree. Since it's basically just a bunch of boxes carefully arranged, I thought I could try my hand at modeling this. What's nice about 3D is that you can easily change the camera angle and lighting. Had I not taken the 3D approach, I would have done various black and white thumbnail studies like this, experimenting with shape design, values, and readability. But using Blender, I was doing all this at once. Changing lighting to alter values, deforming cubes to create interesting shapes. In the end, I liked this image in particular, and used it as my thumbnail base. I prefer drawing with a pencil and paper, especially when it comes to fine lines or designing tiny details, just a personal preference. So I use the artistic filter to create an outline and print out the image at a lower opacity. Step 3. Detail Thumbnail 
In the initial design process, I imagine this being a spot illustration which, without a background, can be embedded into the article itself. Since the box here is my main focal point, the most important part of the image should be here. I want the viewer's eyes to focus here first and then sweep along this way. In the main box, I drew workers protesting, working in solidarity, overcoming the intentional isolation. I wanted to show how coming together in solidarity can challenge and change the dysfunctions, the inequalities, the alienation, and the hypocrisies of late-stage capitalism. I use the idea of removing bricks from walls to remove barriers, using ladders to help people come together. At the same time, I wanted to contrast this with the alienation of living in a system that is socially engineered to make us feel exploited, exhausted, and alone. Here's the overworked office worker with mountains of paperwork. Here's the teacher in an overcrowded classroom in an intentionally underfunded school. Here's a gig worker. Here's a person who's incarcerated in a system that criminalizes those who refuse to work under abuse. Here's a person who's ambivalent to the struggles of fellow workers because they believe it doesn't affect them. Also played around with showing the nefarious ubiquity of surveillance with FMA Brotherhood inspired humunculus eyes. Having finished the outline, I took this back to my digital painting program of choice, which typically would be Krita, but I have been experimenting with Clip Studio recently, especially since it has a really convenient time-lapse feature. I used gradient maps to map out some possible color keys and decided to go with this one here. While doing this step, I made sure to always check if I could read the image on values alone using a black fill layer and set the layer setting to color. Step four, execution. Because I did most of my designing work earlier, this step was probably the most straightforward. I gathered some references, put it all on a board, did some quick drawing studies, and then went to render the actual image. And 10 hours later, voila, here's the finished illustration. Some thoughts about the whole process. I really enjoyed using Blender in the designing process. It certainly speeds things up and allows me to finish the detail thumbnail a lot faster. I think next time I'll probably use Grease Pencil to do the detail thumbnail drawing in Blender itself. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and coming along for the ride. Comment below to let me know your thoughts or any questions you might have. Remember to like and subscribe if you like videos like these. Until then, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you soon in another video.